Hey guys, Cameron here with Emerson Property Management. Every week I bring you tools, tactics, strategies, lessons I've learned, things have helped me build up a sizable room portfolio in about two years and now manage that portfolio. Mustache is growing in nice and thick. Starting to get there. Um, you can't grow any hair right here though, which is kind of unfortunate. But anywho, uh, today guys, I want to talk about the Texas Property Code. So if you're watching this from out of state, you're going to have to pull your own your own code and see, see how yours differs. But in, I'm, I'm just want to talk about a couple different things that have changed within the Texas property code. Sorry, my nose is itching. Ooh, 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 ooh. Um, I'm good. Uh, what has changed recently in the Texas property code? So there's something that I didn't know. I, I go around and present at these realtors. And if you're just um, a small landlord with one to five units or one to, one to 10, something in that range, and you're managing them yourself, here's a couple things you need to know. One, the late fee, the day that you can charge late fees is now in the state of Texas, the fourth. The legal first date that you can charge late fees is the fourth. The tenant can be late on the second. If, if rent's due on the first, the first day you can charge a late fee is the fourth. The rent can be late on the second, but you cannot charge them a fee until the fourth of the month. So if your rent's due on the first, Texas property code says the first day you can charge a late fee is the fourth of the month. So that's the first thing. I was at a realtor event um, speaking and some people in there were blown away. They did not know that. So that change came out like four or five years ago. So if you are imposing late fees on the second or third of the month, you need to push that out to the fourth. Let your leases expire on, and on renewal do that. But yeah, fourth of the month. Um, what are the odds of getting caught? Probably slim to none. But if you do get caught or somebody turns you in, I really don't know what the damages are for that. You can read the property code and find out. I don't want to find out. So that's the first one. Late, due on the first, late on the second, first late fees on the fourth. Uh, the second thing is, a lot of people don't know this, um, you have to change the locks between tenants. So some people do that and they're like, oh yeah, no problem. I've had great tenants forever. I have tenants two, three, four, five years. And you know they give me the keys and no big deal. You got to make sure you're changing locks between tenants. Um, we do it depending upon the hostility of the tenant. We do it super fast right after they move out or maybe a few days, but definitely before the new tenant moves in, the, the property has been rekeyed. Um, including in the rekey, there needs to be a door viewer. So one, late fee, two, rekey, and then there needs to be a door viewer. So what does that mean? So on the door, if it doesn't have glass where you can see out of it, there needs to be a peephole. So you you know you can look out and, and see who's at your, your house. And here's a tip. That is actually uh, also relevant for the garage door. So the garage door is considered an exterior door. So all exterior doors need peepholes or some sort of glass to be able to see who's out there, including the garage door. So that's, that's another thing. Included in your exterior doors is keyless deadbolts are needed now. So Cameron, what's a keyless deadbolt? I didn't know what it was, honestly, when I heard it the first time, but when you, your deadbolt on your door, the one that looks like just a big piece of metal that goes like this, you know, in and out when you turn your, your, uh, whatever it is, that, 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 that turn piece by your, above your doorknob and it turns that piece of metal, it goes, that's your deadbolt. Um, you need a keyless deadbolt, meaning that when you turn that from the inside and lock your deadbolt, and pushes that out into the door that the outside, the exterior has no key spot. So normally I have a deadbolt, I turn it on the outside of the door, somebody can use their key to unlock the deadbolt. That's a key deadbolt, a keyed deadbolt. A keyless, I turn it from the inside and nobody can access it from the outside. Nobody can get in. So that's also required on all the exterior doors. So you need a keyless deadbolt. Again, the garage door is also considered an exterior door. So you need a keyless deadbolt on all the doors. Um, I hope, just to summarize, do on the first, late on the second, first late fees the fourth. You have to um, do, uh, keep, uh, excuse me, exterior, change the locks between the tenants. And then you have to have door viewers and keyless deadbolts on exterior doors. Okay, um, moving on. Smoke detectors. This is the this is the fifth fifth thing here. So smoke detectors are supposed to be ten year detectors. 
Um, I think one of my mustache hairs is tickling inside of my nose. So let me get that thing down here. Woo! Um, so the, uh, the smoke detectors, they have to be um, in every bedroom. So any room that you designate as a bedroom needs to have a smoke detector inclusive of the corridor hallway. And again, if you guys don't believe me on this, you can say, hey, Cameron, I think you're full of shit. You don't know what you're talking about. Just go log on to the Texas property code. Just type in Texas property code and look at it. And then just control F, smoke detector, control F, security device. And it will tell you all the stuff I'm telling you. Now, that's at the time of this recording. This is in October, uh, about to be November, 2022. So if they come out with changes, don't hold me to this. This is just what we're doing right now. Uh, smoke detector in every bedroom. Um, you need to test that between the residents. And um, now, it used to be you didn't have to have a CO detector or a carbon monoxide detector unless there was gas at the property. So carbon monoxide is that, that gas, that odorless gas that can, that can really hurt people, uh, make you go to sleep, not, not, not fun. So it's, it's, it's a, a burn off gas or an exhaust gas from natural gas. So when you, if you have a, a gas hot water tank, if you have a gas furnace, and we do have a lot of gas here in Houston. So that uh, used to be that if you had any appliances, gas stove, you had to have a CO detector. Now, if you have an attached garage, you have to have a CO detector. So assuming that you leave your car running in the garage and it seeps through the, the door, the door isn't sealed properly, you can get carbon monoxide into the house. If you get it into the house, it could kill you. So they say that now that would have to be a hell of a lot or your door would have to be wide open and you'd have to leave it out there for a long time. But that's something that's in the property code now. So you need a carbon monoxide detector if you have an attached garage, even if you don't have any gas appliances. Um, that's it, guys. Those are the main ones I think that are super beneficial for you to know as, as a uh, property owner. So, you know, if you heard this and you're charging late fees on the second and you don't have any smoke detectors and you don't have uh, any security devices and you don't have peepholes and you don't have, just take a breath. Nobody's going to be hunting you down. We didn't do a lot of this stuff when I wasn't reading the property code and when I was starting before we started Emerson Property Management. So take a breath, get your action plan together and on renewals, put the lease information in there about charging a late fee on the fourth and then on turnover, start adding this stuff. So, hey, okay, I'm going to rekey the property. I'm going to install keyless deadbolts. I'm going to make sure the smoke detectors. The smoke detector thing might be something you want to do now if you don't have smoke detectors in your bedrooms because if there's a house fire and somebody gets killed, you're probably going to get sued. So you might want to do that sooner rather than later. But all the other items, you know, this is not advice. I would just wait till renewal and when you turn the property, do this. Install the CO detector, get your do door viewers in, um, there are plenty of Reiki companies that do this. We use Mr. Reiki. Um, there's Patriot Key or something, or there's, there's numerous different services that will do this between tenants for you. So you don't have to go out and have your, you know, if you only have a, one or two properties, maybe you just do have your handyman do it. But um, just make sure that those items are, are implemented. So I hope that was helpful. If it was, let me know. If it wasn't, let me know. And I'll see you all next week.